All right, let's talk about a very important aspect of this football game, which was the three straight three and outs that the San Francisco 49ers had or that the Kansas City Chiefs defense forced. So it was in the second half. The 49ers, remember the first half, it felt like they were dominating everywhere but the scoreboard. Only up seven points felt like kind of a travesty given how well they had played in the first half. But, you know, also got to give credit to the Chiefs for making the big plays and not letting the score get out of hand, of course. But then this happened. So Mahomes threw an interception and it felt like the 49ers in this spot in the third quarter really had an opportunity to put a dagger in the Kansas City Chiefs that they weren't able to do so we're starting off with this one and it's going to be a great play by Kansas City again you got to give credit to the defense we're concept on the screen you see it how it's going to be kind of a play action Purdy will roll out towards the bottom of the screen but watch that player right there I talked about this play in a couple of videos actually but my Leo Chanel video uh watch what he's going to do on this one Watch him blitz right here. He gets through completely untouched. A really well-timed blitz by Spagnolo. Again, not exactly sure if that was a run blitz or a, uh, you know, a pass rush blitz. But regardless, Chanel doing the right thing of knowing where, who has the football, which is a lot easier said than done against San Francisco. He disrupts that play. And even worse for San Francisco, there was a penalty before the next snap. So now they're at a second down and 15 situation. So going over here, you know, the 49ers have a couple of options, right? So the Chiefs are playing man coverage. That It's, you know, find the best matchup and look in that direction. But for San Francisco, yes, you want a first down here, obviously. But you'd also love to get 10 yards here. Even if you don't get the first down, you can kick a field goal and go up 10 points, which, again two-score game. It just, it changes things. That is Debo Samuel's route, uh, so that's a key one to look at, but Trent McDuffie is the one covering him, so, you know, McDuffie uh, definitely had a huge game. I made a video where I said, you know, he should get some looks for Super Bowl MVP, even though I probably still would have given it to Mahomes, but watch how one this play begins. You see, McDuffie's doing a good job of fighting through this. There isn't a ton of space for uh, Debo. Maybe Purdy could still decide to throw it here if he wants to. Something weird is going to happen on this play, though. Watch how Purdy kind of steps up and kind of throws it into the dirt. I'm, I'm not sure if that was an intentional throw away. It looked like it came off a little funny, so I almost wonder if he was trying to throw it to Debo and at the last second was like, oh, that's not a good idea, and just threw it into the dirt instead. Uh, it didn't look like he got hit unless I missed something. Maybe he st stepped on one of his offensive lineman's feet or something like that. Uh, I don't know. Kind of a weird play, but either way, brings up a third and 15, and either way, still good defense by the Chiefs. Once again, Kansas City is, I mean, they're in a full, you know, pass protection defense here. A cover two man, they're going all out to stop the pass on a third down and 15. Purdy is going to take the snap, and, you know, predictably, Chiefs have this well covered. That's what the Chiefs do. But what's interesting is, so you see Purdy is going to get outside the, you know, pocket here, but Kansas City, it looked like they had a defender who was solely focused kind of on Purdy. It was only a three-man rush, a pure three-man rush. But you see that defender, Willie Gay, who I'm not sure if he was, again, I'm not sure if this is a spy or if he was supposed to kind of come in and blitz. But either way, it's smart because you are kind of leaving yourself open for a quarterback scramble. Purdy is someone who can move. However, you see Gay is able to go down and, you know, make the tackle right there. They only gain a few yards. Would have been like a 60, you know, 263 yard field goal can't really try that but had Gay not been there I do wonder if Purdy's able to pick up an extra five yards or so and they can try a field goal didn't happen they ended up punting the football away however no worries you get the football right back here is the second uh of three drives we'll be talking about so again concept gonna run a play action because you know they were running the ball a lot on first downs kind of try to use that to your advantage uh later on in the game right get some play actions going the issue Look at Chris Jones right there. That's who you have to try and find a way to block. And while there were some plays, you know, the, the sort of infamous at this point, leaving Chris Jones unblocked play later on in the, you know, in overtime. However, here he, there's a guy on him. He just gets around him immediately and gets over to Brock Purdy. Once again, a disaster, but it's interesting. So in some ways this is going to get better. And in some ways this is going to get worse. Purdy does a great job of getting around Chris Jones, but then he throws it to Juwan Jennings, but Chanel is right there and makes a tackle. They still lose eight yards on that play. So it was, you know, it would have almost been just as bad had uh, he just gotten tackled right away. Maybe not quite as bad, but still uh, a disaster there for uh, Brock Purdy and for the 49ers. So because of that, now they're in a second down at 18. Again, the running game has been taken out. It's just, it's a bad situation. 
This time for the 49ers to try to make it an achievable third down situation. That's what they want. And you see, uh, it's a bit of a clever route for a running back to be running. But again, Christian McCaffrey isn't just a running back. You see him kind of, you know, going to fake as though he's going towards the sideline, then run back over the middle. Don't see a lot of running backs run these double move type routes. But again, it's Christian McCaffrey. Let's see how it works out. Purdy is going to take the snap. He eventually looks in McCaffrey's direction, although there is pressure and, and you know, it's a tough throw. Purdy's uh, throw is a bit, you know, is hit because of that. And while I would still say that, like, hey, good job getting the completion, you do wonder a little bit if McCaffrey's still on his feet. Can he pick up more yards? Can he make it more achievable of a third down? Because now it's it's setting up a third and 11, which, again, I don't know if it would have gained that much, but maybe a couple yards would have helped. However, going to this third down and 11, it's a situation that on paper, heading into this game, we thought would be a pretty big advantage. It's, uh, you know, uh, it's Chamari Connor, the safety for the Chiefs, going up against George Kittle on a deep shot down the field. I mean, this is one-on-one matchup with debatably your best, uh, you know, not your best outside player. I think Ayuk is their best outside player, but Kittle's definitely their second best outside player, I think. So, you know, Samuel's more of an over-the-middle guy, right? So uh, definitely an option. Purdy is going to take the snap. He looks in that direction. He fires in that direction. Kind of a bit weird, kind of like almost falling away. And I think there's a couple things to note. For one thing, Kittle just isn't open on this play. Also, this throw is just a bit high. I mean, that's one that like, again, people kind of got on Kyle Shanahan in these situations for throwing the football. But like, these are the matchups you're dreaming of. These are the things you're hoping happens. The players have to hit on them and they weren't hitting on them. But that's okay because you still uh, are in position where you can once again uh, take the or get, extend the lead, get, make it a two-score game with this drive. It's a ten to six game at this point, so the Chiefs did get a field goal, but just a field goal. So you're in a situation now for San Francisco where you're okay. Shanahan's going to say, "Well, let's stop with the passing every first down," I suppose. As you see, he decides to hand it off to, uh, you know, uh, McCaffrey, who gains zero yards. And isn't that just always how it works, right? When you're throwing the ball too much, you say, okay, we got to start running the ball again. Then you just gain zero yards and now have to throw the ball anyway. Feels like it, at least. So again, a second down in 10, they're kind of in a pure drop back passing situation. It's going to be a cover two zone, and that's the route they want to throw to with Brandon Ayuk. Look at how one Purdy takes the snap. Again, it's just well covered by uh, Kansas City on this. There's a defender who, you know, gets over there very well, and there's really no window for uh, for Purdy. And this is kind of one of the biggest issues that happened in this, was just the, in, in just in this game, really, was the Chiefs were covering so well. On top of this, the throw, you know, not quite able to get there is knocked away. So again, uh, I think a fine route by uh, Brandon Ayuk, but it's just, it's good coverage by Kansas City. Not really, you know, not a lot you can do there if you're San Francisco. And like this one is another example. So it's again third down and ten now, and you're you're hopeful you can at least avoid a three and out. Um, it's going to be Debo Samuel running a you know route over the middle that's going to be against Trent McDuffie. And when Purdy takes a snap and looks in that direction, I mean, when he fires in that direction, McDuffie is running this route better than Samuel is, amazingly enough. He undercuts it. And to be honest, this looked like it could have been an intercepted pass, and that would have been an absolute disaster. Although, you know, again, it worked out for Kansas City, but at the time, it would have felt like a disaster. However, Samuel uh, knocks the football uh, away from McDuffie. No interception, but still third straight three and out. The you know Chiefs went three and out on, in their own uh, next drive, but then there was the botched punt. The Chiefs scored a touchdown on the next play, and then it completely changed the, the dynamic of a, the game. Once the dynamic changed, the 49ers did a pretty good job at hanging with Kansas City, but once the dynamic changed from Kansas City playing catch-up to both teams going back and forth, Kansas City was able to win, and you just have to look back at these drives and think, man, if San Francisco was able to get more points on the board on these drives and at least, I don't know, uh, kill some more clock or something, or even just let their defense not be so tired having to consistently go right back onto the field, if they had done that, then you do just have to wonder, does the, does the game change? Do the Niners win? It was a huge missed opportunity, and you got to give a lot of credit to Kansas City for not allowing San Francisco to take advantage of their opportunities. That's what I think. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.